group of men are camping on the outskirts of a forest near a river bank, they had finished hunting and are preparing animal skin to be sold as leather, suddenly, a naked man appears, screams for help before falling to the ground, he has an arrow sticking from his back, arrows start to fly in and hits another man in the throat and he falls to the campfire, the men become alert and hold their weapons and slowly start to retreat backwards, they do not seem to see the attackers attacking them, in panic, one man runs to open ground and is immediately shot and killed, the other men take cover behind the trees, a full ambush begin as a group of people charge towards them and full-blown war starts, the commotion alert Glass, the protagonist of the movie and he runs back to help, the men are outnumbered hence easily overwhelmed, as more invaders arrive, Glass command his men to retreat into their boat on the river for cover, the men ran towards the boats but most are killed before they could get there, once they get into the boats, they had no choice but to leave the people who had not reached, to save their own lives. On the camp, the attackers ravage and collect anything valuable from the dead bodies, they are the re-Indians from the indigenous tribe of America, the re-Indians are searching for the chief's daughter who was kidnapped by the European foreigners, on the boat, Glass and his son Hawk are on high alert holding their weapons, they are among a handful of people who manage to escape alive, some have bad injuries while others die from their wounds, Glass was the navigator and had spent a lot of time in this woods, he suggests that they should abandon the boat as they would get flanked and ambushed again by the re-Indians downstream, Fitzgerald is not having this plan, the idea of going back on land and add weeks to their journey sounded very stupid to him, but the captain had made up his mind, they disembark from the boat together with their pelts and horse, Fitzgerald is complaining and still is not agreeing with the plan as they curry the pelts up the cliff, he is more concerned about loosing the pelts than loosing more lives, he turns his attention towards Glass' son, Hawk, who is half Native American, he hurls insults toward the boy but Glass keeps his cool and is not overreacting while defending his son, later on that evening, they release the boat downstream in order to divert attention from them in case they were being followed, it turns out, Glass was right and his plan worked, the re-Indians followed and intercepted the boat downstream but luckily no one alive was on board, on the other side, Glass and the men track onwards on foot, they carry the heavy pelts through the dense floor as rain fall on them, when the others are resting, Glass patrols the woods to check for any potential danger as it was his habit. From a distance, he sees some bear caps walking by, Glass holds his gun to his face ready to shoot, he is breathing heavily as he knows the kind of danger around him, suddenly, the mother bear emerged from the back and knocked him to the ground, it drugs his body helplessly against the ground as it bites and scratch him, he tries to fight back but the bear is too big and strong, it scratches his back open with its big claws and throw and drug him on the ground as he screams in pain, the bear steps on his head and sniffs his face to see if he is still alive, in spite of the pain he feels, Glass play dead and remains as still and silent as possible to fool the bear, the bear leaves to check on her caps and Glass gets an opportunity to run away, he tries but he could only crawl for a few meters on the ground, instead he reaches for his gun, he barely have enough strength to hold it up, when the bear realizes he is still alive, it charges back, Glass pulled the trigger and shoots the bear on the face, this only angers the bear even more, it attack and tore pieces of meat from his back as it maul him alive and drug his body mercilessly on the ground, it turns him over and sniffs his face to check if he is still alive, Glass plays dead again and the bear walks off, he takes this chance to remove a knife from his pocket and when it attacks again, he stubs it on the neck several times, the two fall down a cliff and the bear dies on top of the now half-dead Glass. After a while, the other men find Glass who is still under the dead bear, they remove the bear on top of him and discover he is still alive, he is bleeding vigorously all over his body from his open wounds, Fitzgerald is not happy that Glass fired a shot as it could alert the re-Indians and disclose their location, as some men perform first aid to Glass, the other guard and check in case enemies heard the shot and came to attack, on the other side, the re-Indians meet with French troops, they are there to trade the pelts they stole earlier for guns and horses, to help them truck and find the chief's daughter, against everyone's expectations, Glass is still alive, he could not walk or even speak so he was carried, through all this trouble, Hawk was by his side the entire time comforting him, his weight plus the weight of the pelts made the journey even more difficult, Fitzgerald was not happy at all, as all this was dead weight to him, he suggests that they should shoot Glass and release him from his miseries, as winter approaches, carrying Glass become even more difficult and seemed impossible, as his condition was getting worse and worse, there was nothing else the captain could do, he covers Glass's face with a piece of cloth and point a gun at him, they had to hold Hawk back as he pleaded with them not to kill his father, the captain could not do it, Glass was the only reason they had stayed alive up to this point, the captain had a better idea, three men are to be left behind to take care of Glass as the rest go on and send a rescue team for him, Jim and Hawk quickly volunteers, the captain offers a reward of $100 to the third volunteer and Jim and Hawk also offer their share, Fitzgerald volunteers when he heard there is money involved, later on, Hawk is beside his father offering support, Glass is in a hallucination state, he hallucinates about how happy life was with his wife and child Hawk, 
Before his joy was taken away after his wife was shot and killed and his son's face was burnt by invading forces, Fitzgerald digs a hole on the ground a few meters from where they were resting, later on when others were away, Fitzgerald sees a chance to actualize the plan he had all along, he had planned to kill Glass, he offers Glass a chance to end his suffering and all he had to do is blink if he agrees, he argues that if the re-Indians are to catch up with them, no one will survive including his son, Glass agrees and he blinks, without hesitation, Fitzgerald tightened the ropes binding Glass to limit his struggles, he puts a piece of cloth in Glass's mouth and covers his nose to suffocate him to death, suddenly, Hawk appears and hits Fitzgerald on the head with his gun, he calls out for Jim to help but Jim is too far away, Fitzgerald overpowers the boy and push him against a tree while covering his mouth, he then stubs Hawk in the stomach as Glass watches the whole thing, Hawk falls to the ground and dies, he is pulled away by Fitzgerald who wants to hide his crime, Glass screams but could do nothing else for his son as he watches the horrendous crime, when Jim comes back, Glass tries to report Fitzgerald but no words come out of his mouth, when Jim asks about Hawk, Fitzgerald just pretends he does not know where he is, early the next morning, Fitzgerald wakes up Jim in a hurry, he tells him that about 20 re-Indians were heading their way and if they stay, they will all be brutally killed, Jim panics but does not want to leave Glass there, Fitzgerald hurriedly packs his belongings and urges Jim to do the same, Jim was not ready to leave Glass behind which angers Fitzgerald, he uncovers Glass and hold him by his legs, then drags him on the icy ground, to the hole he dug earlier and pull him in, he covers Glass with soil and bury him alive, Jim does not approve of this, it feels wrong since Glass is still alive, Fitzgerald runs away and Jim is left with an impossible choice, he puts a bottle of water on top of Glass, apologizes then leaves in a hurry, Glass is left there buried in a shallow grave, he could only watch helplessly as the two leave him there, as he waits to freeze to death. Several hours later, Glass wakes up, he is not dead, he uses the little strength remaining to pull himself out of the shallow grave, he drags his body on the ground to the place where his son was killed, his blood is still very visible on the ice, Glass is determined to find his son so he soldiers on, after crawling for some distance, he stops and his face reflects the horror he saw, his boy's body was lying there lifeless, and had already turned cold, he crawls close and place his hand on his son's face, just to make sure as he still had a little glamour of hope, but his son was no more, Glass puts his head on his chest and passes out, far ahead, Fitzgerald is smoking while Jim is napping as they rest, Jim is very suspicious as Fitzgerald's story about seeing the re-Indians is not consistent, he confused the number of re-Indians he saw plus his demeanor is very relaxed for someone running for his life, Jim becomes very angry and wants the truth, he points his gun at Fitzgerald and threatened to blow his head off if he lies, Fitzgerald admits that he lied about seeing the re-Indians with a straight face, Jim becomes emotional to a point that he shades tears, Fitzgerald is able to take away the gun but when he pulls the trigger the chamber is empty, he throws the gun back to Jim and continue with the journey as if nothing had happened, and leaves Jim lying on the ground crying, on the other hand, Glass wakes up, he removes a necklace from his son's neck and says his final goodbye to his boy, he takes one final look at Hawk and crawls away to his stretcher, he takes a few belongings including a woolen coat for some warm, he crawls to an animal carcass and removes some rotten meat and eats due to hunger before moving on, Glass finally makes it out of the forest to a river bank, he fills the bottle left for him with water and drinks, due to the injuries on his neck, Glass coughs in pain and blood drips from his neck and mouth, the re-Indians are just closely behind as they come across where Glass was buried earlier, they discover Hawk's body and fresh blood and realize they are very close behind, to stop further bleeding, Glass makes a fire, applies some gunpowder and burns his neck wounds, far ahead, Captain and his men have not yet arrived, they have lost some men to the cold and even the house, behind them, Fitzgerald and Jim continue with the journey, Glass is so hungry that he ate a dead bird for supper, he tries to stand up using a walking stick but falls back down, as Glass is relaxing on the river bank, the re-Indians catch up, he backs into the river and tries to hide behind the cliff but he is seen, he jumps into the fast moving river as the re-Indians shoot arrows towards him, the first moving currents drugs Glass downstream and he falls down a waterfall, Glass tries to swim out but he is unable, he nearly drowned but luckily manages to find a floating log and hold on to it, but finally, Glass manages to swim out, his clothes are soaked in ice cold water, Glass manages to make a fire to warm himself before he frees to death, at this point, he is so hungry that he jumps into the river, catches a fish and eats it right there, when night comes, he hears some commotion up the cliff, he goes and finds a man eating meat from a buffalo he had hunted, Glass falls to his knees and begs for some food, the man is kind enough as he throws Glass a piece of meat and he devours it without hesitation, night passes and in the morning, the man is checking Glass's injuries, he inquires and Glass tells him what had happened, it turns out, the man was also in mourning, his entire family was killed by invaders, he was going south to find more people from the Pawnee tribe as revenge was not in his hands, the man is kind enough to take Glass with him, he makes fire during the night for warmth and carries him with his horse during the day, Glass's wounds are getting worse and even starts to rot, on the other hand, Fitzgerald and Jim make it to their destination, 
They report straight to the captain where Fitzgerald lies about what happened. Jim is not happy with the report but does not give the correct story. He even refuses to take the money promised to them which Fitzgerald is happy to keep. Glass is getting worse and finally he drops from his horse and loses consciousness. The man is always, is willing to help. He makes a tent and fills it with hot rocks and steam to disinfect the wound on Glass's body. Glass goes in another hallucination state. He hallucinates about meeting his son and is able to say his final goodbye. But when daybreak reaches, the man is nowhere to be found. Glass walks around searching for him and finally found him. He could not believe it. The poor man's body was hanging from a tree lifeless, with a placard written savage hanging from his neck. Glass had not even learned his name. The men who did this heinous crime were camping a few meters from where the man was hanging. It turns out, they are the same men the re-Indians are looking for. They had kidnapped the chief's daughter and used her as a sex slave. Glass sneaks behind one of the guys as he is raping the poor girl and steals his gun. The girl gets a knife from his pocket and hold him hostage as Glass goes to steal a horse from them. The horses makes noise which alerts the other men. Glass tries to call for the girl so that they can escape together but the girl cuts the rapist balls and runs in the other direction. Glass cuts all the other horses loose and climbs on one horse and escapes. He drops the water bottle he was left with by Jim. The chief's daughter was able to escape from the brutal men and Glass also escaped unharmed. As Glass was sleeping, the re-Indians caught up with him. He is caught off guard and they begin to shoot at him. He barely manages to get on his horse and ride off. The re-Indians are hot on his tail and converge towards him from all directions. He tumbles and fall off the cliff. Luckily, tree branches and snow cushion his landing and he survives but his horse died on impact. He is shaking as the temperature is freezing. Glass crawls to where the horse lay dead. He cuts open the stomach, removes all the internal organs and enters without clothes to avoid freezing to death. When morning comes, he survives to see another day. He puts on his clothes and continues with his journey to the fort where he knew he would find Fitzgerald. He has only one thing in mind. Fitzgerald killed his son and he had to pay. At the fort, a tired white man comes to seek refuge. His men had all been attacked and killed by the re-Indians and he was the only one who survived. He had a very unique bottle with him. The same bottle Jim had left glass with when they buried him. Jim noticed it and when the man was asked where he found it he said a man dropped it after stealing the horse. Jim knew it was either Hawk or Glass and the captain organized a rescue party. Fitzgerald looks very worried, the captain and his men ride horses to search for them. From the darkness, a weak and tired man emerges, it was Glass, Jim could not believe it, the paralyzed man who they had left buried to die was in front of them. When they ride back into the fort, the captain goes straight to look for Fitzgerald as he was told the heinous crime he did, but he is nowhere to be seen. He knew the punishment for murder was death by hanging and he could not wait around for it. He had taken all the money and headed for taxes where he would start his life afresh. Glass is taken straight to the nurse to treat his wounds, but all he cares about was the man who took all he had in this world. The captain tries to convince him not to pursue Fitzgerald as he could die but Glass is not afraid of death. Finally, the captain made his decision. They would both go after Fitzgerald. Glass refreshes, takes a horse and they both go after the murderer. Glass knew Fitzgerald is not far as he does not know the area as well as him. Before long, they caught up. The two split in order to cover more distance. Glass finds traces of fire at a camping spot where Fitzgerald was. He knew he was not far. On the other side, Fitzgerald comes out of his hiding spot pointing a gun towards the captain. The captain tries to take a gun from his waist and Glass hears shot being fired. Glass quickly gets on his horse and goes to the direction to investigate. He finds a body lying down in the snow. Fitzgerald not only shot the captain, he also skinned the captain's head. Glass sees an avalanche from far and knew it as Fitzgerald. He comes up with a plan. He cuts a tree brunch and continue with the journey in open field. Fitzgerald was hiding waiting for Glass and when he sees them from far, he sniped and shot down the man riding the front horse and thought he had killed Glass. And when he went closer, Glass shot him on the shoulder. He was pretending to be the dead body and had plumped up the captain body with the brunch. Fitzgerald runs and tries to escape from Glass. Glass quickly take his gun and chase after him. Fitzgerald runs downhill through thick snow and Glass follows closely behind. They enter into a scattered tree forest. Glass holds his gun on his face pointing ready to shoot. Fitzgerald fires a shot towards Glass but misses. He throws away his gun to try and ran faster. He slides and fall down a small hill. Glass jumps down after him without any hesitation. There was nowhere else to run. Fitzgerald was cornered. He tries to explain to Glass but he is having none of it. His anger can be seen on his face as he is face to face with the man who killed his boy. Glass is holding an axe while Fitzgerald has a knife. They charge and a fight began. Fitzgerald overpowers Glass and almost stub him on the head but he overcomes and push the knife into Fitzgerald's stomach. Glass is stabbed on the hand and he hits Fitzgerald with his axe. This weakens Fitzgerald a lot. Glass removes the knife from his hand and stub Fitzgerald's leg. Glass crawls and comes on top of Fitzgerald. He had his chance to take his life and get some revenge but he could not. He remembered the lesson he learned from the Pawnee Man on revenge. Suddenly, the re-Indians appear. Glass take Fitzgerald and throw him into the river. The currents take him right to the re-Indians who were more than happy to kill him. 
The Re Indians pass by without harming Glass, as they had found the chief's daughter who Glass had helped escape. Glass had finally 